And they really wanted to create a very unique um, playground. And I do believe they also got, you know, the student input and things like that. I'm also aware at that time in our area, if you can think of, you know, that whole grass area, there was no fencing. It was just one large one that even went out um, to the current one outside of our fence. There was no playground at all. And so in 1995, the playground was installed. And in the same year, the city of Ventura, uh, they formed an agreement with Ventura Unified School District and they granted Ventura Unified um, School District $20,000 uh, for the playground. And in the agreement that they made at that time that the playground was open to the public on holidays, weekends and non-school days from dawn until dusk. And that agreement expired on April 30th, 2002. Do I change? Okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, you're looking at the Rainbow Bridge Playground. It has had a full lifespan of 25 years. So when you look and you say, well, what is the average playground lifespan? It's 15 to 20 years. And I, and I think that the, the length of it just showed the love and care that went in when it was, was created and built. And one of the things though that has been a challenge for though those times is there is a uniqueness of that playground where when equipment needed to be um, changed out or upgraded or anything like that, it was very difficult because it wasn't a standard uh, equipment. And then of course, things have changed over the last 25 years and it is not in a spot that meets ADA compliance and some of the safety policies. And I think I kind of give a quick peek. So here's some of the things and just actually a, a quick reminder, we have had to remove some of the major items on the playground over the years, such as the tire swing, there were climbers um, there, you know, and it's funny, it's like, I remember this, there was a bridge from one structure to another, there was a trolley rider, and then other things that we just had to close off. And it's things, as you can see in the one picture, where you, you have, you know, the change in the wood from weather um, conditions and just being worn out that it, it's just not something that's a simple fix. And as we all are very aware of that, it is mainly the wooden um, structure and it has just, it has been repaired as much as it can and it's just at a spot it can't anymore. And from what I'm being, you know, we, the last inspection that they do, know that there's termites and they are sitting in the foundation of that wood. So that's just kind of brought it really quickly up to a larger concern. And unfortunately, if you've been there, that is why it is fenced off. So I, I'm here, I'm excited. I hope that you do find that, that excitement. Um, we have an opportunity to bring a brand new playground to what will be Lemon Grove next year. And one of the things that I want to do is highlight some of the things that was given, you know, and shared with us and making this a really kind of neat opportunity. I'll tell you, it was one of those things that we wanted to stay a unique playground, but we weren't looking at duplicating what we have. Rainbow Bridge is just one that will always be a, you know, a unique item that was there and it would not be possible to try to replicate it. So in, in response, we looked at who are our students now? You know, what do we know for ADA compliance, some of the student needs that we have on our campus, and how can we make sure that we are offering them something that they cannot find in another school playground? So this is just a quick kind of overlay and some of the pieces we're gonna kind of zone in on and get a quicker look because there's things that I want, you know, to reach out and say, you know, when you look at it, what do you think of, of different ideas to actually put in there? just uh, you know, one of the different overlays. And I hope that what you notice is there's some equipment that will have a new look, but it's kind of coming back from what we know have been missing from a lot of playgrounds. And that alone really brings a, um, some excitement. I, fall, fall, I always want to point at the screen and I remember, I'm like, no, 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 you're not seeing me point, but you will do close-ups. You're going to see that there are swings there. You're going to see something that um, is really the new and improved merry-go-round and even a zip line. So one of the first things that we know um, we needed to make sure is all students had access to our playground. And so right there and then you, you see that little arch. So they can access it through a ramp. And 
the thing that stood out with us on this is it's just not the idea of, okay, get students up and now they're up, you know, on the main play structure, but it allows there's interactive activities all along. And so they can stop anywhere. I know it's really the first very quick one we think about is, um, you know, students in wheelchairs, but I will also tell you that the previous year we had a student who had visual impairment and because of the way our Rainbow Bridge currently is with the wood chips and unevenness of it, they were not allowed to be on that playground for their own safety. And so this is something that we're excited. Like it's just meant for all of our, you know, our, our students and all of our children. Here's our first little thing is this is down low. It's, you know, again, access for everybody. It's interactive panels. And so one of the things, and I, and I didn't mention when you see, we really looked for kind of colors, you, the browns, the greens, the beige, that would more mirror trees, forest, outdoors, rather than a very bright colors. And you, there's the one little window and it says a ranger station. And so we've got a couple pieces. This is the things that we're working with the company and said, what else do you have? What else can we take a look at to see what we want? And um, I'm going to back up for a second because I guess I, I didn't put it in and I could have started with it. It was uh, through our facilities and through the process that you have to do with any you know large purchases of, of offering different companies opportunities to share. We did select Park, uh, Park Planet and this is all of who you're going to see all of their um, pictures of. So I think the next one is going to be our first poll. So what we're looking is an opportunity that you can imagine that we're having our kids come out and start to play and interact, the imaginary play that you didn't, wouldn't even think that they would come up with. And so it's just a little simple thing that when we're looking like you see something where number one, it's got a full overhead cover or just like a little half panel. And so we thought we'd start off very simple with a poll of what do you want one or do you want it to see two in a playground? Okay, so I'm a little nervous because it's the first time I've done a poll yet in a webinar, surprisingly enough, with the amount of webinars I've done this past year. So um, I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. And we are asking our audience that's in participation now, go ahead and vote on either number one or two. I think this is in the way, so I'll move this over a little for you. And we'll give you a couple of minutes here to vote. I was going to ask, because you're right, I haven't done this, and it's... do. Do the results get saved or should I be right? No, I results are saved. Okay. Don't worry. I got you, <laughs> I I got you covered. Okay. I got you covered. <laughs> so we have a couple in already. We've got about just a few more seconds here to get some more participants to vote on if they like one or two. All right. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and I will share those results with everyone so you can see. Uh, 60%, three, uh, it's very close because three people like the one with the overhead and two like the one without, so. I know, and it was a very simple, like we've got some other ideas of, of throwing it out, but we thought, let's just start and make sure like the polling worked too. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, new on that. Okay, so now I have to close my screen. This is where. Oh, I think okay. we've got it here. So this is the next one for, to choose from. And again, what I wanted to pick, uh, point out, I mean, you obviously number one, it's it's got the little car one. And I can show you there is a piece up on um, when you go up the ramp and you turn up on the main structure, there's another piece that's designed. It has a curve to it. So if, again, you may made have you know a walker wheelchair accessibility you would actually be able to get a little bit underneath it and do that but we still thought you know it right on the ground level would be great so there's one and then piece number two is like a little bit like window three they it is made for them to climb through and four is musical and so we're asking like what top two would you want and so i think on this poll you do you get to pick two choices Give me a second here. I'm trying to get it to. Oh, of course. Hang on. It's downloading results from the poll. See, this is what happens. Hold on one second. I know. Let 
my apologies, everyone. Give me one second here. Try this again. And if not, we have a backup way of doing this. But let's try to do our poll two. And I'm going to launch that poll. Oh, I think I did it. So go ahead and pick between numbers one, two, three, and four, your top two that you like. Leave that open for a second. Looks like we've got most of our folks have voted. And it looks like three and four are your top two from this particular poll. Can you see that? Yep. Okay. Great. Yeah, I. So I think three and four are your top on that one. All right. I like these. I like this stuff. Okay. So you, here's a different view on it. You can see where those um, interactive pieces would go. My, my cool little red arrow. <laughs> what I'm trying to highlight in there is these, there's these three green little stepping stools right there. And I went back to the designer and I, I said, well, I can see the color kind of goes with everything, but do you have something more with the theme? And so, uh, this is what he shared out and replacing that. And this is just an example, like, so you, he'd say, okay, you pull that out and you've got three um, mushrooms. And if I hold it there for a moment, if you look from the, the two tiny mushrooms, it would be a way for them, the students to get from one platform to another platform. Um, I kind of imagine almost that, a little bit of that hot lava game type thing. If you look a little bit beyond the mushrooms, there's another location that has the, like, cut logs and that's why I was saying like you've got some of these already like pieces of wood here can we do something more that was just not a green circle and the next one gives us some choices you get a little guy showing how and then number two is what currently was put in as a design number three you could we could do more of the logs number four is looks like a stone and then number five would just be a different design you know triangle in, instead and so again, we're asking, um, pick two of, you know, what would be your top two to re, you know, you could stay, right, what it is, or you can go ahead and decide you'd want something different. So which top two would you like the most? One, two, three, four, or five? And for those that are with us um, and you weren't here at the very beginning, we will do a Q&A at the very end. So hang in there with us. And if you do have questions as we're going through, feel free to put those in the Q&A. I think if, you know, if everyone doesn't mind, like sometimes, you know, when you think of a question, we put it in there. If we see it's something on a particular slide that we're showing and it matches, we can always respond to that. But then otherwise, we definitely will get it to the end. And that way we'll kind of, you can see what the whole, you know, concept for the new playground would be, and then we can definitely go through and um, try our best. I'll try and see if, you know, what answers we have. If not, we can always figure out how to get those answers for you. So I think Principal Martinez, we're seeing a very nature driven theme here. If you see the mushrooms and the logs were the top choices there. All right. Okay, this, this is just kind of an overlay again. Um, this gives us the opportunity, if you can look and see in the corner where there's a light green or curly slide and then you look straight underneath it, that's a design of a clubhouse. That whole little area is supposed to give the feeling of, of a clubhouse. There's two little benches for the students to sit down at the very bottom. And it is a log that they're climbing up to get up to the second level. And then you notice that the wood, the roof, the you know, the little sun cover is slant, like you would find a you know wood slant. Then this is again one of the other overlays. It's another side, and this took me a while. I I will just tell you personally. I think that this one, I, I tried to show a couple different pictures, but it's going to be a matter of um, 
once you really, I, when you see it in person, then it seems to make sense. It, it took me many different ones, but I wanted to show like a different side in, in you know, in all of the activities the students have. Swings, and that was a big excitement for me. And part of this though, is taking a look at swings and we know there were different options. And I believe that is up next. And I'm gonna, yes. So we, we're looking, um, that you have a saucer type one that can fit one, it can fit two, and they can just sit right in there. Uh, one of the other things that the number one that I was informed on is good for, if you remember the good old fashioned, you just lay your belly down across, right, long way. And then of course you have your traditional tire swing, except it's a different material to keep it from kind of getting sun faded, that's cracked and things like that but that's what that would be. So out of these two styles, which one would you pick? Well, and I have to admit here, I, I, I messed up a little. So we're gonna do this instead and I will write this down. So I did not put this into the poll. Uh, so you're gonna choose, um, if you like number one, I'd like you to use the raise hand icon. And if you like number two, don't do anything. I'm gonna stop and stop my share for a second here and go back into my Zoom. Are you letting me? My computer doesn't want to do what I wanted to do. I'm sorry, everyone. That was that was why I was just I was late, like reloading the computer. Yeah. So if you like that first one, it was raise your hand. If not, we'll have you not raise your hand. And it looks like I'm gonna give it another second or so. <laughs> it's tied. So there it's uh four to four. So there you go. They like them both. Maybe we can do one of each. <laughs> uh, you know what? I will move on and I'll show you what we're going to talk about. So this might help. Um, and I wrote it down too. I wrote, so go. we have, yep. So we have this. And then if we go to the next one, no, I apologize. Um, I have a couple different things, but I'll, when I come back, when we come to a larger view, I'll show you that we are really thinking of like whether it's the saucer, the tire swing, but I'd be like said, we can explore if it's both. You'll see there, you know, we're looking at traditional swings and then we're looking at, um, I think it, oh my gosh, it, was it the seesaw type, you know, where there's two people and they're going back and forth and I'll show you those. So this little pod that has the red arrow point, actually, I'm gonna pause for a moment, I'm gonna go back. The one in front of it not highlighted, that is the new merry-go-round. You can see that you've got four sitting on there. They can actually use the middle piece to spin themselves. Yes, students or adults could move it around on the outside. It's also supposed to be designed in certain areas that it is safe for even a student to stand on. So there, there is the new merry-go-round and it, it is a really cool feature. So the second piece that was shown to us is the one I have the arrow on it and I just call it the pod. And it's designed to kind of like a spring to go back and forth. And it, I will, as a principal, the supervision of that was a concern, um, especially just, you know, how many students piled in there and things like that. So I asked, what else do you have? And so we, and the, the replacement suggestion was a neat neutron carousel. And I looked at this and I was like, what is that? And I, the comment that it, Jesse is the gentleman I'm working with, and the comment he made is, if you choose to go with the neutron carousel, you may find that you have to actually get the adults off of it. And it thought, well, okay. So I went back and looked, and I, I wish I had the. I don't know if I can. Can I show? Like, can I hang? Can you see if I hang put something up? I had just found the picture. It's it's like the whole thing kind of moves around and it is something of course and remember when i was talking about we want this to have pieces that others have never had or we don't see in ventura this is what i'm talking about and so it's not high um you know you'd be able to step off and be standing but it's it, they start just swinging and moving and something that we don't see on our playgrounds so that was i was like okay very kind of cool all the things we didn't even know was going on in playgrounds now.
here I wanted to share, and, and I do know that this has been something that some of the playgrounds have been adding um, throughout, but, and we did ask for a musical piece to, a musical component. And so the mushroom there is a musical component. And then, and another part are the two flowers, and those are musical components. And I think then we said, so, I also asked, I said, do you have anything else also we wanted to see? And we'll, we're going to ask you, we have this, and then we'll show you that they did show also five, I think they're five cylinder looking pieces that could almost be used like bongo drums. And the way that they designed it is mushrooms and flowers are kind of all around the, not all around because there's not a lot, but there's several through the edges of the playground. And this is where I, I think things, but some people are very musical. So you out there, you may already have a better idea. I was like, should they be closer together? Are you looking? I mean, I'm thinking like kids kind of in a band type thing, or is it better if you know you're you're out there and you you get your time alone with music and you're not trying to make it louder than someone else's? And so, just what do you think? Do you would you see that this your you know children would like it their own little music area, or do you think you know together? forming that band, the, we got the band together. So we've got that poll up right now. Do you think all the musical items should be closer together? Yes or no? Let's give it another few seconds here. Okay, it looks like you're getting the band together. So let me share those results. Uh, Majority said, put them all together. Okay, yeah, and honestly, there's times that I think of something and then I've got someone else brilliant that comes by and said, yeah, you didn't think of that. And I was like, oh yeah, all right. That's, okay, there's, and yes or no, huh? We have, add those drums in. This is interesting, we should do, and anybody right behind the school, <laughs> they're not that loud. I'm a couple blocks away, I, I don't know. Maybe I should vote on this one. Yeah, because that's what I felt like. I felt like, what else musical do you have? Well, guess what? I think everybody I is telling you. Yep. Share, do those drums. We need those drums. Okay. So then we are looking um, right now, and it's longer than one that I've seen in a while at any of the parks, but this is your, your zip line. And you can see it has a platform at one spot and then it has another and it's it's right there across. The model here, they added it what they call the dragon rider. And my understanding is that if that's what we choose, that's kind of what you would say, oh, were you on the dragon rider and not the zip line anymore? Um, we, we did ask, and I'll just tell you, but I can't, I mean, I can't do anything because you know, we were looking at for price and spacing too, we, we were like, can we do two? You know, we were kind of like that idea of, you know, students kind of racing on each other and things like that. And again, we wanted to have something that no one else had. So my question though, is I think when you go to the next one, we do have a couple options and you can see there's the dragon rider and I can, you know, there's, there's the one and you can do the two people on that one. You have your traditional um, seat, they call it the belt seat, or you have a standard one that was like a disc one that you just sit on and go down there. So what do you think? So go ahead and pick your favorite type of seat here, one, two, or three. It looks like the dragon rider is the one where you would hang on, right? Yeah. The and then the other ones you one. sit. And I think actually, and I apologize, I wish, you know, it's like I tried to take in as much. So most of it, I think the dragon rider, you could sit, but it almost does look like it's got that pole that you could, yeah. you could stand too. So you get some um, differences in there. All right. So it looks like the dragon rider may be showing up. <laughs> it's kind of cool, isn't it? I mean, we may have to call it the Phoenix rider though. Ooh, that's right. 
wanted to just share with you, this was at something else um, in any of the companies that had submitted, we asked, you know, like I said, we asked for musical components. Um, we asked for a, for a communication component, communication board. And this particular one, if anyone out there is familiar with any kind of speech therapy, this is a very well-known communication tool that they would use. It's the idea that you know, when our students are having difficulty communicating, the frustration happens. You know, there's not, I know, right? When you're just like trying to get your point across and, and it's not you know, coming across it and it is frustrating. So for our own you know, students and children out there when they're playing, if they've already been taught this in a different setting, they can come back and use it with the adult who knows it. And it will just help them to be able to, to be understood and to communicate better. So wanted to just share that that is part of it. When we're talking about ADA compliant, we're talking about all of our students having access and enjoying the playground that this was a piece that they had brought to us. Okay, so then, you know, I hope you all appreciate my big old red ear. <laughs> so the other thing on this is that is another zip line. That's a little bit more what you might see at some of the parks nowadays. And I just, I threw out and I said, okay, well, we have one. Is there anything else you can offer us if we didn't go with that piece across? And so I think he came back with, with the, um, the little monkey bars areas. And so I just throw it out to you. Would you rather, do you think, you know, for, for kids, would they rather see even one more zip line or would they rather see uh, the monkey bars across? So forgive me, it looks like I wrote the poll wrong. So let's say, and I'm recording this. Um, so yes would be a vote for keeping the zip line. No would mean you wanna replace it with something else. Okay, we're getting some results here. So keep the zip line, yes, or replace it with something else would be no. And it looks like you've got replace that with something else. Give them something else fun to play with. And next one, same little thing. I told you, like I said, I, I know there was no way we would ever replicate what Rainbow Bridge was. So I really wanted to, and I know the staff really wanted to push for something that was just nowhere else. And I can't help notice the little spinning around that my wonderful red arrow is pointing to. That also is in the playground right next to us. That is the city playground. So I said, to, I said, they have one. We want something different. So coming up is this is, um, they can sit on it, they can step, you know, and hold, like stand and hold, and it kind of rocks and, and moves back and forth. So my, my question is, you know what, perhaps one of the favorite things for kids is the spinning, you know, they hang on spin. So maybe it doesn't matter if, if they could play with one in another, you know, park or not, because that's just a favorite. Or is it something that, hey, this is something new and they won't, you know, see it around in other places? So the question in the poll is, should we replace that spinny thing that they already have in the park that's at Blanche Reynolds Park or, or uh, keep it? So yes, replace it or no, don't. You know, I, I don't know all of the formal names. <laughs> I know, we're, we're really going to have to come up with something more technical than the spinny thing, but oh, oh. It's close, but I think don't replace it, it looks like. Yeah, but that's why, I, I mean, you know, people know what their kids jump to on, the, on those playgrounds. Okay. Okay, next, there we go. Okay, I wanted to highlight what um, the, the playground company had come out and seen our playground at, at you know, the Park Planet Group. So as this was explained, most of it, as you saw, was the greens, the browns, and you know the, the beiges. And so this piece, you can see blue in it. It's one of those ones that I would describe as like the spider nets that they're climbing on and they're climbing through. And the blue, as uh, the designer had shared, is to resemble water. And when you go, I think one more slide, 
the blue the the blue slide that you see down there is the other kind of side or corner of what we were just looking at and part of that was like a waterfall so there's something else and i should have done my big old red arrow if you look way in the other corner there's that yellow horn like talking piece and that's what it is it is the talking piece that's there so yep that right there so hold on to that and then if here was what I think that they were thinking and I wanted to throw out to everybody here. If you turn to the next one, this to me is you talk about our ORCA and um, I will share, we actually did check and yes, we can keep him if we want him. And my thought was, oh my goodness, if we put him by that water, um, that right area, it would make sense. I will share staff feedback, which I had no idea and I will ask. We are looking at, at that green artificial turf and, and I don't know if it's possible that they said, could we do a section blue? So it would almost look like they're in the blue water. We don't know, but we sure will ask. So the big question is, do we keep our orca? Oh, I know, you, our kids will love that. <laughs> Sorry, it's a resounding yes. That's not going anywhere. I didn't realize I was muted. I uh, hear from the from the peanut gallery in the other room. You're muted. Okay, so we'll go yeah. to the next slide. And this is our Q and A section. So give me one second here. We're gonna take us out of sharing mode so that I can get to your questions. And then I'm. It just you know you never know. It's hard when like you're not in person. So things sometimes I'll be taking notes on stuff if it's things I'm not sure on or I need to get back, you know, and share out answers and information and things. So if you see me doing something, that's what I'm doing. So uh, one person said that the musical instruments in the slide made them think of the Santa Barbara Zoo. So that's pretty cool. Um, that goes along with the whole nature theme. Uh, someone else said who um, who made the mosaics at the Rainbow Bridge? I was asked if any of the mosaic art or handprints could be saved. In order to save, they would need to be cut out, which requires a specific process. Let me know if you would like more help in regards to this inquiry. Okay, two things is that um, I know I'm going to answer that and I'm going to probably answer it as my parents always accused me more information than you might have, you know. Oh. The personal tiles there along with rainbow bridge has the rainbow it has the native americans so there's key pieces in there that we want to save and we want to repurpose because like i said this is not about just kind of like oh you know we're, we're moving on it's it's we need to for the safety of our students but at the same time we want to kind of create a a place for it to be honored i mean there was nothing else like this in, in Ventura or anywhere else of the community coming together. So I do, if if you have a, the knowledge with the special technique, I would love you know to have that. Um, you can always just email me and it's susan.martinez at venturausd.org. It's on our website. You can always just give us a call. But the other piece is wanting to make sure we preserve it. All of those will be individually photographed before we even go near doing anything with them. Next question, if you can just go over the timeline a little bit. I know that, and I know everyone online because I'm seeing the names all realize that anything can change on a dime. However, I know that we have a current timeline in, in place, um, at least for all of Lemon Grove uh, to be finished. But do we have any idea of the timeline for the bridge, when it's going to be coming down, when the new, school, new one's going up? Well, I, I will be, I think as far as it coming down, it's probably going to be a lot sooner than later. And when I say sooner, maybe within the month or so, we want to make sure first, we've had opportunities where people can ask questions, they know what's going on. Um, we want to make sure that all of that has, you know, outreach has been there. And, you know, and sometimes it's even like doing something like this and letting it settle because someone didn't realize it. And then you know, having another opportunity to do that. But I, I will just speak honestly to all of you that 
like I said, the, the, the main structure of it is now considered to be compromised with the, the termite damage and things like that. And that was the whole reason for the fencing off. And then yet, I, I can't tell you the number of times that then, you know, we're, we're heading out or we're doing something um, later in the evening and um, children have decided to move over into, you know, over that fence, right? And now, now they're still on it and, and I get it. So we just, in the midst of bringing something great and new, we, we just do not want to take a risk for anybody's safety. And so that probably will be happening sooner. And I think though, um, I, I'll share as, as I've talked to many about Rainbow Bridge, I, I don't think it's something that we would necessarily want to highlight as like, hey, this is a big event and, it, and it's coming down because I don't, I don't think that that's, it's just a, a tough feeling. And that's why I'm saying like with the idea of making sure the, the mosaics and the tiles that if we can save them and repurpose, having them you know, somewhere else on campus along with the Rainbow Bridge and the Native Americans. Um, and having their place in there. But what we really would love to do is to be able to do a larger celebration of once the new one comes and that excitement is there. We have also heard that there is a time capsule that was there. And again, if we start to remove it and we find that, yes, we found it, our thing is we're, and we're telling, you know, like if we freeze, just hold off everything. We will photograph, videotape all of that, but we will save that opening until that like, red ribbon cutting of a new um, playground. It's, and I just, I'm making this up as I go, but it's that bridging, right? Not making, you know, the rainbow bridging, but from the one that has been to the one that is now. Yes, and we have promised that if we unearth a time capsule, we will stop and we will go live on the district Facebook page to make sure everyone knows <laughs> the news because we're hearing a lot yeah. about time capsules. Um, what they would like to know is, do you think that this will be done by the next school year? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's it. That's a big one that yes, um, we, you know, I am excited and thrilled. We ha we've had our students on part time. We're excited, you know, around the corner, we've got them full time. And at the same time, it's a heartbreak that it's like, and you have no playground. So we need to get them that playground. They, they deserve that. So yes, yes, we are, we are moving, you know, quickly. And will the playground still be open to the public on weekends and after school hours? I, I can honestly share with you, that's a kind of a bigger um, thing than like I could even answer what, what's interesting is like I said, the the agreement between the district and the, the city actually expired like in 2002. And we know that we still have that. So it's not, you know, for me to change, that would be something like our school board and the city would have conversations with, we're not anticipating any change at, at this minute. Um, you know, I, I have always seen that the more things are loved and used, the better, you know, that they're, they're it's like the kind of protected if you, you know, if you'd say that that way, but that's something that I think our district and our city is going to have to take a look at and revisit. And what will happen to the wood from Rainbow Bridge? I had heard, and you know, I have to tell you, I've had many people reaching out on different things and it and it's helpful, especially right now, because I had heard something in that and I thought, I don't know. So I was able to, you know, to ask and, and find out because of the, the termite damage, because the, the, the wood is treated, um, there's certain things. And so what for the whole, all of the components and things like that, they're going to have to go through the environmental process of what, you know, where do we need to dispose of this properly? They, I had asked, I said, are there any pieces that perhaps we could put out there if people could use, but just not knowing the full safety of any of it, they just didn't feel comfortable with, with it. It's kind of like, if they didn't feel like it, if, if, if it's safe enough, you know, right now as, as time has gone on, how can we ensure it would be safe for anybody that would pick it up? So at this time, they're just gonna follow the, you know, the guidelines for environmental safeties as, as far as removal of things. So I'm going to let everyone let that settle a little bit, see if you have any last minute questions. Um, and I will let uh, Principal Martinez kind of close up with a few words, just make sure we don't have any Q&A last minute that are coming in. Do you want to? Um, oh, do you need me to reshare again? The screen, uh, the presentation. Um, you know, I was, yeah, if you don't mind doing that. And there, I just, I, the question that came up with the company removal, I don't know. That's a that's a good question. 
Um, you know, there's there's certain things depending on what they are, depending on how much we anticipate they cost and things like that. You know, they they have the processes they have to go through. And I have to tell you, I, I'm, I'm not familiar, you know, with that one. Can I ask, because I think I did see in the question, can we go and jump, I don't know, maybe slide five-ish? That someone had asked for the the whole the, the big picture. Let me see if we can go that one. Or maybe um, I know. I apologize. I didn't even think of that. You know what? We can get it. We could probably get some on our website too. You know, so and, and so, Ms. Principal Martinez, I don't know if everyone knows which questions you're answering. That's, so okay. So uh, so we needed a picture, but then you said you don't something on the website. Sorry. Oh, I don't know if we what pictures if we could put the playground pictures on the website. Sure, I can make sure that yeah. we get a gallery up there. If everyone can just give me till maybe after spring break, then I'll make sure those go on yeah. the website. Absolutely. And yeah. Principal Martinez, I can't see the Q and A while I share, so I know that there's two questions in there if you okay. want to take a look. Yep. Oh, I did see that the removal, um, the company doing the removal, and typically. You know that is all public knowledge, of course. And so, if if we do get, you know, I get a name and things, I'd be happy to see if we can um, share that out. And the chance of eating, oh my gosh, that would be so cool. The grassy hill, like the Santa Barbara or the Kellogg Park. Um, you know what? Those are things that I don't know if we would do at this, you know, at this point. Um, like we could change anything big like that. But we're we're very lucky to have a large area. And, you know, we're not done in, as far as long term, like this is what we need to do right now. We know we have middle schoolers coming in, they may need some different equipment. So perhaps if we were moving forward through different equipment for them, and we had an opportunity to roll in something like a grassy hill. Um, I think that would be awesome. If you have been on the grounds, you know, we also have a very unique space that has it, it has one little st climbing structure and we're not touching any of that right now, but it's got like a little st climbing structure and then like one of those little things, um, great to know these playground words, huh? That you throw in the ball and it rolls out one of the sides. So, you know, those are areas that we could always examine and hey, could that be a spot? So I do like that. Um, I have to, you know, in far as the ground surface, I do not believe that it is the, the recycled tire tire materials i can double check but i when i was at citrus glen we had we had that i believe that's what it was and it and it wears out and they just couldn't fill or replace so we were one of the uh really good schools first schools that got the artificial turf and i can tell you I thought it was the sweetest, cutest thing that it is so soft that most of the playground was used for laying down for the first week or so. The children just went out and lay down. And so, and their heat at Citrus is more, um, I always said their weather was more like Santa Paula than what we would get with our nice ocean breeze there at, at Blanche Reynolds. So I'm not anticipating that. I'm anticipating the, um, the, like I said, the artificial turf, which actually just gives it a really green, nice feeling too. You know, I, I can't think, I've been reading the, the age appropriateness for middle school. Definitely they have access to all of it, but sometimes, and I'd have to look, cause I know um, they usually do have targets. Oh, you know what? This is, I'm just showing you how, how old I am when I, when I have to hold my paper and I don't even, I can hold it far enough. Um, I can find out and I'll look on it. Typically, I think that when we're looking at this, it's usually they say five to 12 at the age, but for middle school, we were looking at two pieces, sometimes a little bit more related to like physical education. And then the other piece of where can be a safe place, like just like that kind of cool hangout because we'd like to socialize because we may be too cool to play type thing. That was what we were thinking for middle school. Um, so this is still mainly targeted for what you would consider your elementary age students, if, if that makes sense. And then the the link that's in there, can I cut and paste to save that at another time so I don't go off on, is that, let me see. I do wanna take a look at that. 
I can download all the links. Okay. I, all of the information that's in the Q and A, I will download download all of that for you. So I'm yeah, going yeah. All of a sudden, you you. I'm like, where'd I go? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm I'm going through just to make sure we got. I think, and then that we'll save that link, um, age appropriate, and I think that's it. So for your questions, I think you got them all. Okay. All right, so uh, last minute words from you. And I know that you do want to uh, publicly announce our new book drive. So I'll share that right now too. I mean, I, I, I think it's perfect if you think about, you know, Rainbow Bridge became the reality because our community is, is so strong and, and supportive of it. And we often have times, you know, we have people ask, you know, what, what can we do? What quick, you know, can we do for our schools? So Lemon Grove, as you know, is becoming um, increasing in size uh, up to the eighth grade. And so we are, we are starting and we're, we are purchasing books, but it takes a while and to get those right titles and things like that. So if you are looking for a way to support, we are doing a book drive and, you know, any could be new, the gently used books. We know hardcovers, they last longer, but we are always appreciative of, you know, of anything. There's, um, I think we posted this somewhere else too, because then the, they'd be able to do the link. Right, oh, so yeah. I will be putting this on the, the list of um, suggested books. I'll be putting that on the Lemon Grove website tomorrow. I apologize, I didn't get that to that today, but we will be putting that on the website tomorrow. So if you are looking for various books to donate for our middle school children, since we haven't ever had them at this location before, um, I know we would all appreciate it. We are right now putting together book plates so that we can, put in there generously donated from the Martinez family and uh, not to put you on the spot there, Principal Martinez to donate any, uh, but that's one of the ways that um, we are going to continue to ensure that our community is involved in, in Lemon Grove as we continue to move our community forward. And I know as a Lemon Grove resident, I am just so excited at all the things that are gonna be happening on this campus over the next few years. I've been lucky to be mm -hmm. in some of the meetings to talk about the innovations and things that are happening. So I am really excited. And while I know my family had a hand in building that rainbow bridge, I know that this new playground is gonna bring so much joy to your new students. So I appreciate you sharing everything with us tonight. Uh, I hope the viewers got something out of it. And um, we'll make sure that we post this, uh, this webinar up as well. Um, but I know Principal Martinez is always open if there's any further questions. Absolutely. A absolutely. And, and, you know, that was, I think the big thing is, it's just, we want to do it respectfully and, and honor all of, you know, the, not only the beginning part, but all of the memories. I'm, and I will just share right out there as a teacher is the only place I, of all of the schools I went to, I could teach my kids how to play kick the can because they had, you know, it was the layout for it, you know, and I always think about it. It's like, oh, I play, you know, so I get it and I understand it. Um, it, it just, though, we're, we're ready um, to, to have them make sure that all of our students have access to it. I think that's, that's, you know, a big one for us. Great. Well, thank you everyone for being here. Ms. Castaño, thank you so much for your translation. Um, and we hope that everyone will love this new playground as much as we do. We really greatly appreciate the input you gave us so that we can make sure that the kids have exactly what it is they need. And they're so excited to be there on the first day it opens. So we will share more information with you all as we move forward. And we really appreciate you being here tonight. So thank you so much.